Hi there, welcome to yet another project video. In this project, you're going to build this phenomenal application from scratch, powered by smart contract and centralized server. This project will teach you that how you can build a real world application and solve real world problem. We're going to create NFTs, we're going to provide that NFT in the contract and we'll provide an API so the user can make a request to the API and they can fetch the data. So tons of things is coming in this project. I hope you will learn tons of new things and that will teach you every single thing that you have to know to build a real world app. So let me give you a quick demo. You can click on this button and you can simply log into the application. Simply type your credential, click on unlock. Once you will log into the application, you will have this profile. Log in to your application. So you have to pass your email ID and the password. And this login system can be done with a smart contract or it can also be done with the centralized server. So here we are back into the login. You can simply click and you can log out. Then you can click on the sign up and you can create your brand new account. Let me pass the email ID. You have to pick your password. Then you have to confirm the password. Now click on the sign up. Here you have created an account and this data will store in the database. You can simply upload the NFT. You can see this NFT. Click on this. Pick the image of your choice. I'm going to select my. And here we have this pop-up module. We can provide all the details about the images. Let's call it the Dolot Hussain. Let's type the description. Welcome to NFT API tutorial course in which in this you web3 api then pick the email id and you can select any category click on create and this will make the transaction this will not only store the data in the contract but it will also make a request to the api and store the data in the centralized server here we are charging 25 matic coin for the transaction as an order of the platform click on this confirm to make the transaction here we have this beautiful animation and every single thing we're going to build from scratch. You will not only learn that how you can write the smart contract, build the backend, but you will also learn that how you have to build the phenomenal UI part. So we have this loader and here you will find this is the one we have created. You can click on the recent and this is the one. Click on this. Here you will come to the NFT detail page and here you will find all the information about the NFT. You can come back to the home. You can click on this one and you will come to the detail one. So our router is also working fine. You will have all of the information. We have the category, ID, date, do donations. And you can simply click on this address to copy. You can click on this URL and you can paste here. And this is the image user can copy. They can also download that one. Here we have downloaded that. Now if they want to donate, they can easily able to donate the funds. So this is the amount I want to donate because this one is real application which you deploy on the Polygon. So complete the transaction and this will make the transaction. So that looks pretty amazing. You can see every single thing is working absolutely phenomenal. We have all of this data and this is the amount we have donated to this particular this one simply copy that one and here we have all the recommended one which you can click and you can have the details about the all this one so we have this beautiful project which we're going to build from scratch and tons of learning coming on your way so hope you guys will enjoy with that let's start working on our project so here i have created this folder nft api and in that we're going to start working so make sure to come and create a folder on your desktop and let's start working on it open up your visual code click on open Go to desktop and select the folder we have created so click on this show more and then we have this click on that so here we have the folder which is absolutely ready and we don't have anything in that so now what i will do is i'll come back here in my browser and all the source code you will find right here on this website so come back to the blockchain coder if you haven't visited the website so source code and you can scroll we have tons of project so if you're really serious about the development and learning about the blockchain then come and build this nft marketplace this is one of the best tutorial we have. All the tutorial are best, but this one is the most industry ready project which you can build. So you can get it. You can have, we have the supply chain and we have this real estate marketplace on a blockchain. So this one is also a phenomenal application which you can add in your portfolio. And if you run about the API development, totally API development, then this project is absolutely must. It's a 12 hour long project. Make sure to follow that. Now what I will do is this is the one which we are going to work on it because I have provided all the source code and the final code so we can get it. So click on this get now and here you can get the complete source code by click on binary and like 
when you will buy you will give a small contribution to our team so we can able to bring more courses so that's why we have taking money for the complete code but you can click on the starter file and you can download all the source code all the starter file which we have developed for this particular project in that you will have everything simply grab this url come back open up your terminal and we have to clone the repo so say git clone paste the link and we have to give this dot because we want to create in the same folder so click on that and here it's cloning and you can see let me expand this one let me bring this up so we have successfully clone it and bring this down close this one let's come back here and here you will find all the folder and file structure which i have already predefined so all you have to do is to install get the startup file and you can start working straight away so let me show you what we have into this so let's this is the api folder and in that we have this three folder control model and router in this we're going to build our api so if i open this control inside that you will have this auth controller and nft controller so in that you will have nothing because it's totally empty and we're going to write the entire code together then we have this model for the nfts and the user model so we don't have anything in that then we have the router for nft and the user because we have to provide the endpoint so user can make a request for the login and they can make a request for getting all the NFTs. So these are the three folder we have. Now let's close this one. Now we have this component folder. Inside that we have all of this component. So we're gonna build all of this component together. So we have button, we have the button here, we have card, we have checkbox, we have donate, filter, footer, form, and we have header, this is the like an image folder you will find all the images all the assets we are using including the figma files and the clients images all the images you will find here if you open these are the clients images we'll use and this is the images now we have the and you will notice here that we have this arrow this is the image we're going to use in our filter and we have this search icon so these are the two icons and all we have imported here in the index.js so the same structure i'm following here we have imported all the images here and we're going to export it from here so we can utilize it in our project so that's the image folder close this one now we have the loader we haven't written any code so we're going to write it together then we have the login then we have the logo then we have the notification so it's empty then we have the product and then we have the profile then the sign up and here i will provide you all the csv file all the csv icon which i'm using in the project so you don't need to code it so if you open this this is the entire csv file for the delete icon all this one delete delete this is the file this is the format csv and this is the github Instagram all of the icons we are using in the project that's all CSV file you will find and then we are simply importing here in the index.js and then we are exporting it so that's the way we can use in our component looks pretty fine to me things good close this one close this one and here we have the upload component and this is the CSS file let's come here and here we have imported all the components we have created under the component folder so all the component we have imported and we are simply exporting here so we have already done all the setup here in the startup file so let's close this one and this is the context in which we're going to write the entire logic for our, for our application this is the pages so we're going to have close to three pages in our application so this is the image folder and in that we have this image file then we have the let's come here we have the this app js here we have to configure our store our providers then we have to come back to the index and here we're going to build the home page of our application then this is the api here we're going to build the api section so these are the three pages we have and this is the image in which we're going to display the details about the nfts looks pretty good let me replace this one to only image that looks good so close this one close this one close this one and here we have a public folder in that we have couple of static csv file which you don't need to worry about it so close this one and we have this style inside that we have nothing we're going to write the stylings for our application and here we have created a web3 folder and that we're going to write the smart contract and that's why we have created this dedicated folder here so we have the contract and it's called nft ipfs because we are uploading this data to the ipfs and fetching so this is the contract we're going to build together we are using this particular version make sure to use the exact one then we have the get 
get uh, get techno so we are not going to push these or these files in github then we have the hardened config file and here you have to do some important configuration when we'll deploy the contract so you can see that we have this imports then we ha you have to get your own private key like during this tutorial you can able to see my private key but don't pause the video and copy because i have seen that many of you use my private key you don't use your own so make sure to use your own private key so here you have to paste your private key and that's the only thing you have to do all of the things will be remain same so we are optimizing our smart contract we are configuring our polygon networks so that's the configuration and this is the packages and file all the packages are already defined here all you have to do is to install so don't need to do any changes here so we have all of these packages now this is the readme file and you don't need to worry about that close this one and this is the get ignore file this is the api app.js for the api here we're going to write the api codes then we have the env file and here you have to provide your own database key and database password so you can see that here i have defined couple of variables so the first one we have is database so i'll show you how you can get the string from the database and you can get the string and you can paste here and how you can get the password and again i have explained this extensively in the complete api course so if you are new to api i would recommend you to watch the complete api course that's a 12 hour long and i have explained every single thing in that and here we have this JWP, JWT secret key and we're going to use this JWT, JWT secret key to build a token and you can give any text I'm giving this particular string but you can add anything but make sure to keep it above 32 characters because when you will keep it above 32 it's going to create a better inscription okay so that's the token we have and here we have defined the variable so we have the expiry and expiry cookie you can easily able to play with this value and number but i would i would recommend to go with the same approach and when, when you complete the project after that you can do the experiment close this one now we have this next 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 config file we don't have anything in that this is the packages and file so here we are using all of these packages so version private this is the script we have and we have to do a little bit of modification here so this is the dev environment this is the build environment and this is the start environment for running our API so we're going to test each one of this now this is the dev one and this is the node one so if I come here here you can see we have using all of these packages so make sure you have to use the exact version we are using here no matter when you are building this project because these are the most stable one and we're going to build on this and many of you complain that my my package is not working because you have installed the different version that's why your application is not working so make sure to follow the exact version we have used here now come back to the readme file and here i have provided some important information which you guys can easily able to have a look that what are the resources i have provided so the blockchain code there here we have provided the final code here we have the startup file and here we have the figma file which you can get it here we have my personal course which i have launched very recently and it's one of the best project which you can include in your portfolio in that you will learn the power of redux toolkit it's absolutely amazing so when you will get a data from any remote server any api it will help you to manage the entire state of our application so i would recommend to watch this particular video in which i have explained that how you can manage this state and how you can make an api request so this is one of the best project i have included so make sure to check that one and here we have a couple of links so what i will do is let me show you see this is the eight hour course we have cinemos you can see how many modules we have here you can play you can do this and here you can able to find what are the modules we have included what are the things you're going to learn in this particular project all of this thing you will learn this is the front-end development you will learn about all of these components structure building and the data structure then we have the api section and these are the things that are absolutely amazing react student toolkit all of the things are very important for developer to know how to deal with the api so all of the things we have covered extensively and we have got some phenomenal response from the user because before i launched this course it was in the testing mode and we have allowed 100 users to take the course and give their feedback so finally they have given amazing feedback and that's what you can find here some of the important questions which you can have a look if you have any doubt so come and have a have a look on the video and that will give you a better idea so let's come here you can support you can get all the project official website and book consultancy so all the important resources i have provided in the 
readme file now what we have to do is come back here here we are api this is the component first thing we have to delete this and get i don't need that one so i'm going to delete that one now come back here so let me bring make it big and now we have to install the packages so open up your terminal and first we're going to install the package this one all of these packages so simply type npm i or npm install both will work fine so this will happen very quickly because we are using very light packages and it's happening just a moment and finally we have installed all the package just clear your terminal bring this down not that one bring this down come back in the node modules and here you will find all the packages we have installed don't need to worry about that now let's bring it up and first we have to simply get into the web3 folder because we have to install the packages here in this so let's type cd web3 and hit enter and we have to install that hit enter and here we are in the web3 folder and now we have to install the packages so npm i and this will install the packages we need and the installation is completed and now the environment is set for development so now we can start working on the actual application so what i will do is first i'm going to start working on the api so first we'll build the entire api with all the feature and functionality then we'll test that after that we're going to move to the smart contract and at the end we're going to start working on the front end part because first thing we have to build the core functionality for our application to make it workable hope you guys will got have a great idea that how we're going to proceed it so this is the app just here so all of these folders and files we're going to work on close this one so this is the server js file come back to the auth controller this is the nft controller this is the module and looks fine this is the closest one now come back to the router we have these two routers so what we're going to do is we're going to start working on the router first okay so this is close this one close this one close this one close this one and let's come back open it come back to the router and let's start working on the nft router first so first we're going to import a couple of things so we'll import the express because we have already installed the packages so we have express then we have to install the nft controller we haven't written any code but just import that one which is coming from controller nft controller after that we have to import the router and this router is coming from express now we have to simply assign that router so we'll use this router variable dot router and in that we're going to define our root directory and on the root directory we have to make two calls first get method and in this get method we have to get all the nfts then we have to make a post request on the same router and on that we're going to call it create nft so these are the two methods we are calling on the main directory again i'm telling you that just build this project once you complete this project after that start building the nft api it's a 12 hour long course and that you will understand everything that what logic we are building because I have already explained in that course in details. So I will just simply use those. So our root directory is started. Now let's come here. We'll take this router ID because we have to get the NFT based on the ID. So let's get get NFT. So these are the two endpoints we are building. Now we have to simply import export that module router looks pretty fine. And that's the only thing we have to do here. So it's pretty good. That's the only thing we have to do here. We have imported the express controller router and we have these two endpoints. Looks pretty good. Okay, close this one. And now come back to the user router. Click on that. And now we have to start working on the user router. So the same thing we have to do here. We have to import express. Then we have to import our auth controller because we have to deal with the authentication like login and sign up. So we have to install, import the auth controller. After that, we have to get the router from express. And then we have to build the endpoints. So the two endpoints we're going to build is sign up, and the second one is going to be login. And in both the endpoints, we're going to make it post request because we have to send data to our backend to make user login. And then we have to simply export the router. So that's pretty good. So these are the entire piece of code we have to write in the use router. So we have imported all of this login and sign up. These are the two endpoints we have built. Now come here. So we are done with this router. Hope things are making clear to all of you guys. Now we have to work on the model. So now we're going to start working on the NFT model because we have to define that what data we want to take from user and assigning to the NFT. So let's import a couple of things. So first we have to import Mongoose and that's coming from Mongoose. 
then we have to come here we have to define the schema and we are using this method called new mongoose schema and on that we're going to simply define all the data we want to take so we want to take the title of the nfts and it's going to be a string type then we have to take the trim because when we'll get the data some user will provide extra space so we have to remove those extra space that's why we are using this trim validator so the title is ready now we have to take the description and is it gonna be a type of string and you can trim that one you can also add a required field we are done with the description now we have to define the category then we have to define the email then we have to define the address and they find the created ad so when the nft is created so here we're going to take this type date and we're going to take this by default is going to be now <laughs> created ad now we have to take the image <coughs> image so these are the schema model these are the data we are taking in our schema model now we have to do a couple of things so we have to take this nft mongoose.model and we have to simply export the schema model model.export and that we have to pass this nft and that's the only thing we have to do so that's the entire model so that's the entire model for our nft you can make it more complex again i have explained that in detail in the nft api project that's a 12 hour so make sure to follow that to have a better understanding and how you can add a validator and, th and that's what i'm not going to do here okay we want to make it workable so let's close all of this create ad and we have our nft models is ready close this one come here and now we have to work on the user model and the user model will not be simple as the nft model because we have to do the validation of the password hash and a lot of logic we have to build here so first thing we have to import the mongoose then we have to take the bcrypt script because we have already installed the packages and this package will allow us to encrypt the password because the best practice when it's come to building authentication is that you should never store user password as it is in your database. You have to encrypt that one. So if someone hacked the hack the database, they can get the email ID, but they can't get the password. So in that way, you can make your user data more secure. So let's import the package. Now we have to build the user schema and the same logic we have to follow. And here we have to define all the fields we want to take. So we have to take the name type is going to be a string. Then we'll take the required trim and it's a required field because user has to provide their name. That's why we have made this required to true. And this is the error message we are passing. If someone don't provide the required name, then we have to throw this error message. Please tell us your name. Let's close this one. Then we have to take the email ID, type string, required field, please provide your email. And instead of email, you can keep their wallet address. It's totally up to you. Okay, if you want to validate the user based on their wallet address, you can do that one as well. And we want to make it unique. So every single address of every single email ID should be unique. If someone's tried to create an account with the same email twice, it's not going to work. And then we have to convert that to a lowercase true. And that's the field we have to include in the email. Now let's come here. We have to define the role. And by default, we're going to set the role to user as an user because we're going to have two type of roles. One is user and the other one is the admin and we are the admins. And based on that, we're going to define a couple of functions. So by default, it will be user. Let's come here. We have to take the password and it's a type of string. We'll take this required field and we'll say, please provide a password. And we'll also take the confirm password because user has to confirm the password it's a type of string and it's a required field please confirm your password and we have to use this validator and this validator will only run when the user will create his or her account this validator will not work at the time of login just for okay that's the thing you have to keep in mind so we'll say validate function element and we'll take the return we'll take the password and we'll try to con and then we have to simply return that one and then we have to throw this error message if the password the user is providing is not equal to the element that the password are not the same so that's the confirm password now here we have to build the method model so we'll take this user schema and we'll call this pre-hook 
and this prehook will run when the user will click on this this method will run and here we have to simply call this async function and here we have to first run this function so this function will only run when the user password was actually modified so like when the user will try to try to log into the application and try to log in the application so this function this method will check whether he or she has changed his password or not if they have changed then this method will work run otherwise it will skip and that's why you use this next so we'll say this modified password and then we have to return the next middleware again I have explained everything about the middleware so make sure to check that so run the next then it will go to the next one so we'll say hash password with cost of Ethna. so we have the encrypt function and now we have to simply hash the password so we'll say await bcrypt hash and we have to pass the password so the higher the number you will get the better the encryption will be but it will take time it's a resource incentive so 12 is the best as per the recommendation of the industry you can use it 12 but you can go for 16 but this will take the longer time to hash the password now we have to delete the confirm password because we don't want to store the confirm password field in the database and then we have to call this next so we are done with the first method in our user model it's called prehook and we will run this particular method when the user will try to save and create his account so first it will check that whether the user have changed their password or not if they have modified their password then it will go to the next middleware otherwise it will go further and it will simply encrypt the password and remove the confirm password fill from the database and then it will move to the next so that's the first method let's build the second method it's called pre save and we'll take this next we'll say if this is modified password then we have to call this method then we have to simply return it then we'll have to call this password change at and then we have to pass the date when the password is changed and then we have to call the next function so this is the second method for checking for the password change with the date now we have to take the third method schema and in that we're going to run this function call next and this will allow us to point the current query so whatever user passing the query to filter out the data that's the query we are dealing here so what we'll do is we'll take this this find and we we'll call the active false with this we try to get all the data and display so that's what we are doing here now simply call next and that's the second model we have here sorry third method we have now come here we have to take the another one called method current password and this function will going to run when the user will put his password and we're going to call this current correct password to match the password with the encrypted password and the user password so we'll say candidate password and this is the user password now we're going to return this bakery function and we'll call the compare function and we have to compare the two password one password from the database and the other password from the user and then we have to build the fifth model which is a change password after and then we have to take this JWT timestamp we have to check a couple of conditions so we'll say the time of the password change and we convert that in parse integer and then we have to pass the password change at time then we have to define the second and that's the Thing we have to do and at the end we have to simply return the then we have to simply return the value of jwp timestamp and it should be less than the chain timestamp if that's the case then we have to return the actual date again i'm telling you if it sounds complicated just work along with me code along with me and after that once you complete this course after that you can take the complete api development course in that i have followed the exact model and i have explained every single thing in detail okay so once you complete this project after that move to the api course so we are done with this method as well now we have to simply check false so if if it's changed then we have to run false so we can come here now we have to simply export the model so we'll say user user schema and then we have to export the user so that's the entire model so that's the entire model we have defined for the user both for login and a user creation account so we have all of this data so we have so many methods we have built here 
so we have the name email roles password confirm password these are the fields we are taking then we have the couple of methods so we have the user schema all of this close this one now we have this prehook for the modification in the passwords looks pretty good and this is the password change at you can't find in the user model but i have built this one in case if we want to add this fill in our database we can add that one but for the time being let's have the function and let's not include in the database okay that's why you can see you cannot find here in the password change at looks pretty good to me so here you are on my youtube channel simply scroll down let me show you the course you can take after this one so let me scroll all the way down to find out the video we have one close to 1000 video it's going to be 1000 very soon so let me bring it down here and here we have that so you can see we have these two videos six hours six hours this one is 640 and this one is six hours pretty huge so make sure to take this two, take this course after this one that will give you a better idea that how you can become a master in api development and that i've explained every single thing which i have covered here so let me bring it big this is the modified function close this one then we have this find close this one then we have the correct password close this one and then we have the change password so all of these methods we have built looks pretty good now close this one we are done with this user model so those are the two files we have done close this one and now we have to start working on the controller so we have this two controller auth controller and nft controller so let's start working that so let's start working on the nft controller so first thing we have to do is we have to import the nft model we have defined then we have to come here we have to export the get all nft so this function will allow us to get all the nft we have in the database it will take this request response next and in that first we have to call this nfts and we have to find the nft we'll say await nft.find method and this find method will give us all the nft from our database and then we have to simply send this data so we'll say send response we'll say response dot status 200 for okay then we have to take this jsons and status success and then we have to send the data result is going to be the nft dot length and then we have to send the data which is a nft and that's the only thing you have to do the endpoint we have build already this endpoint to make a request and that's the data we are sending first we are getting the data from the database and then we are sending the response as a status success result the number of length it will display that how many nfts we have and then we are sending the entire nft so that's the first function we have let's write the second function call get nft and this will allow us to get a single nft so it's going to be async function because we are dealing with the promises we'll say request response next and in that first we have to get the nft based on the id because every single nft will have a unique id so that's what we have to do we'll say request.prams id and this id will come in the form of url so that's the id we are getting and that's why we are filtering so first thing we have to check send the response we'll say status and we have to simply say success data is the nft and that's a simple response we are sending we are finding the particular nft and that's what we are sending it now let's come here let's write the other function for create nft the same method we have to follow here first we have to call console the log the request we are getting in the url body means request body in that request body we'll have all the data which user will send for creating the nft then we have to take this variable called new nft and we have to call this new dot create method so we have save method we have create method so here we are using create method and in that we have to pass the entire body when we pass the entire body it will create the document in our database and then we have to simply send the response back 201 for create as a response status success then we'll say the database sorry data to the new nft the nft user have created as a response So hope this entire thing makes sense to all of you guys so we are first importing the model so this is the model we have you can see this is the nft model we have built and that's what we are importing because whenever someone someone hit the or get all nft requests it will go to this model and it will validate all of the things and then it will send the response so we have to use the model so all of this thing we have here 
come here so first we are getting the model then we are building the get all nft function to get all the nft in the database close this one then we have this get nft we are finding the nft based on the id and then we are sending back as a response then we have this create and this will allow us to create a new document in our database which user can call and create here we have the create method and passing all the data in the body so that's the entire NFT control we have. So looks pretty good, close this one. And now we have to work on the authentication. So we have to import the couple of things. So we need the JWP, JWT token because we have to do perform some hashes. So that's why we need the package. Then we need the user model because when the user will call any one of the authentication methods, it will go through the user mod model and it will validate all of the condition we have defined. So we have the JWT, JWT and the user model. Then we'll come here, we have to build the sign token. And every time user will create a new account or login, we have to send the token back to the user. And on the base of that, we have to do the authentication. So let's create the token. In that token, we have to pass the ID. So we'll take this return JWPT, JWT, <laughs> JWT dot sign in that we have to pass the ID and we'll call this process dot ENB. I hope you guys haven't forgot that this is the variable we have defined in our E dot ENB file, which will be used to create the hash for the token. Then we have to take the expiry date. So when this token is going to be expired in, so we'll take the expire in time and this will generate our token. Now we have to come here, we have to build a create send token function because this will generate the token. Now we have to send this token back to the client. So we'll take the user status code request and response because we have to know the user who is calling the function. So we'll say const token, we'll take this sign token and that we have to simply pass the user ID because that's who interacting with the, with the login functionality or create function. Then we can come here, send the cookie. As I will send the expiry is going to be a new date. And in that we have to define that one. We'll date date dot process and we have to define our cookie expiry in. And we have to simply convert that into a millisecond. That looks fine to me. We have our cookie ready for sending to the user. Now we have to take this HTTP only. So we want to use this particular function both in HTTPS or HTTP. So that's why we can define that as one as well. So we'll say secure. And the reason why we are building this particular logic because this will automatically detached whether we are using the HTTPS or HTTP only to be on the safer side automatically. And here we have to define that HTTP. So we have our cookie ready. Now we have to take the remove the password from the output. So obviously when the user will create his account, we don't want to display his password as an output. We want to hide that from the data which user will receive after creating his account. So we have to say the password is going to be undefined. And this password will store in the database. But when it's come to getting a response in that we are hiding this one. Then we'll take this response status to be status code. And then we have to pass the data in form of JSONs. Then we'll take the token as well. Then we'll pass the data of the user. Hope you guys have understood that what we have done here and from where we got the token, where you are getting the users, all of things. So that's the entire for generating the sign in token. Now let's create a function called sign up. We'll take this request respond next. And in that we have to simply take this new user. And in that we have to call the method we have built in the user model and we'll call it create method and we have to pass the data. So we have to pass the name. We have to pass the email. We have to pass the password. Then we have to pass the password confirm. All of this data is coming from the body. So these are the data we are passing in the model. Now we have to simply take this create send token because this function will send the response back to the user, his details and the token as well. So we'll pass the new user status code response. And that's the only thing for our sign up function. Now let's create a login functionality. The same things we have to receive in the functions. First thing we have to get the email and password from the user and which is there in the body. Now we have to take the check couple of conditions. So we'll have to check that if the email and the password exist in our database or not because we have to match that. 
if email or password is not then we have to simply send the 4400 error and in that we can set the status to fail and we can send the message that please provide email and password that's if it's not there looks pretty fine okay now we have to do the second check check if user exists in our database or not so first check what we done we have to check that whether user have passed the email or password or not if they haven't provided the email and password then we have to throw this message the second check we have to do the check that whether the user exists in our database or not so we'll take the user user find one we have to find the user based on the email because that's the only reference data we have and we cannot find the user based on the password because the password is in the in encrypted form so we'll select this call dot select password because as an output we have omitted that password that we cannot have the password as an output uh, when it's come to getting a response to the user but here we have to say explicitly that we want password so that's why we have called this method select password we'll come here if user and then the we have to call the method we have built in the user schema model and we can have the access because of the user user variable we have here on that we're going to simply call the correct password and in that we have to pass the user password and the password we have in the database and then we have to simply send the response back that it's a fail if it's not matches and we have to say the incorrect email or password so that's the second check now we have to do the third check if everything is okay then we have to simply change send the token back to the client and then we're going to use this particular function we have created above so so that's the entire piece of code we have to write for our authentication hope this entire thing makes sense to all of you guys and again i'm telling you that if it sounds complicated so that looks pretty good so we have this token we have the user then we have the sign on and all of things looking fine so this is the user model we have this is the sign token we have and sign token we are passing this variable checking for the expiry and the secret key if i come back here in the so that's the signing token we have and then we are creating token and sending back to the user we are taking all of this data as input then we are assigning and sending the cookie and then we are removing the confirm password and then we are simply sending the token and the user and this is the sign up which is a very simple to the like nft created one and then we are using this method and the last one is the login one which is also a very simple one checking for a couple of conditions like password exists then user exists and then we are getting this password from the database and then we are confirming that, that this user has the right password then we are sending back the information so all of this information we are providing here and that's the entire authentication we have for the users looks pretty good so we have done with the user model this is the entire user model we have defined pretty good <coughs> this is the nft model so that's pretty good we have written all the nft model close this one this is the entire router we have defined for nft router we have the user router close this one we have the nft controller <coughs> then we have the auth controller authentication close this one so we are done with the entire code we have to write in the api folder <laughs> okay so looks pretty good to me done with all of this close this one and now we have to start working on a app.js now we have to start working on an app.js and configure our express and build the server so we have to import a couple of things we need express and we need the cross because we have to allow user to make request on our api from different domains if you don't provide that you will get a cross origin error so that's why we have to fix that error as well at the very beginning when we are developing the api then we have to take the nft routers the routers we have built coming from nft router then we have to take the user router once we have these two data now we have to take the middleware and here we're going to take this app express okay now we have all the power of express in our app variable now after that we have to use this 
And can you guess why we have used this particular variable? I have explained extensively in the complete course, but let me tell you what I have done here. So what I'm doing here, I'm saying that I want to use express.use and I want to use this express.json because if you don't provide this one, so whenever user will make any request on the API, the data will not be stored in the database. So here we have to say that we want to ex use express.json and here you can set the limit that that how big file you want to allow so i want to allow the data of 100 kb you can increase it to 1 mb it's totally up to you if you have a lot of resources in your database you can increase this value so that's the one we have now let's come here let's take this cross and initialize that one and here you can pass the option i just want to provide in all the domain now we have to define the route so we'll say this is the route this is the endpoint I have built. So generally, this is what we follow in a in a actual API development. So API stand for API slash v1 means version, the particular version we are building, and then and then you define the resource. So NFT means it's a NFT resource. The same thing we have to do for the user resource, and we'll say user router. So whenever any request will come, it's first going to hit these two endpoints it will come all the way down and it's going to hit this routers so if anybody is looking for nft is going to hit on this and it will go into the nft router and then it's going to make all the logic and get return this response the same thing goes for the user as well so once we're done with that we have to simply export this app file because we're going to initialize this particular application the entire server in our server file not in app.js so that's the only piece of code you have to write here looks pretty fine and clean to me so this is express then we have the cross then we have the router models then we have this express then we have the limit of justations then we have the cross and the router endpoints looks pretty good to me now come here now we have to work on the server file so we have to import a couple of things so we need mongoose coming from mongoose then we have to use the next and the reason why i'm using this next because what we have to do is we have to run our backend server, backend API, and we have to run our frontend application as well. So that's why I'm using this next. And this is the exact configuration you want to do if you want to run the API and the frontend simultaneously. But it's absolutely fine if you want to host uh, your API on a different domain, on a different remote server, and you are getting a data in the front end. That's the two different things. But here I want to run the API and the front end in same resources, in same location on the same domain sorry so now we need the dot nb file because that's what we are using here then we take this dev environment process dot n node environment and we have defined this variable by default is will take the production development and we'll say it's not equal to the production so then we have to define the next server we have to do this configuration in that we have to pass the dev environment that whether we are in production or development then we have to check for a handler and this is the function we're going to call it next server and this is the one we have get request handler in this way this will trigger our application and the api simultaneously then we have to take the dot nb file we have to pass provide the path so this is the path in which we have the our environment variables then we have to take this app because we have to import the file we have exported from the app.js now we have to import it here in the server file then we'll come here we have to make the connection with our database so we'll say db stand for database we'll say process.env database replace and we have to pass the password make sure to provide in capital password and we want to receive replace this password with the exact variable the password we have about the database so we'll say this process.env database password so that's the string of our that's so that's the string for our database now we have to take this mongoose and in that we have to pass a couple of configuration. So this is the exact configuration you have to do when you are using this particular version we are using of mongoose. Okay. So we have to pass the connect database. We have to pass the new use new URL press true. Then we have to pass the user created index true. Then we have to pass use find and modify false. So this is what we have to do and it will return uh, promises then we have to resolve the promises then console the this db connection successfully so that's the connection for the database now comes on the port let's build the port so we'll say by default we want to run this application on 3000 you can define any attributing number and we'll say they take this let server next server 
and we have to prepare our server it will return a promise then we'll say app dot get and we have to simply follow the general convention we have to send the return in return we have to send the handler and request and response so that's the next server and in that we have to simply take app dot listen and we have to start our port the server and this is the keyword is available is listen which means it's start the application and we'll say app running on port this so that's the next server we have looks pretty fine hope this entire thing makes sense to all of you guys that what we have done these are the pretty basic thing we have done and I have explained this extensively in the API course. So this is the next we have. We have dot in VNV, then we have the checking the development and production environment. Then we have checking the next, then we are building the handler, next handler, and then we are doing all of this configuration, which is a basic one. App and here we have the database. And I'll show you how you can get your own database string and the password so just to wait and this is the connection we are building with the database and looks fine now what we can do is come here go back to the packages and file and here you can see this is the exact version you have to use because this particular version has this particular method to connect with the database if you use any other version it's not going to work this is the express we are using and here we have the other ones all the packages we have here so let's come back here in the server file. So this looks pretty good to me. And this is the listener starting the server. So that's okay. We have done with that. So now what we have to do is we have to get our database string and password. So this server variable is also optional. If you want to add more modification to that, you can do that. And there is multiple function which you can include, which I'm not going to cover in this video. So let's let it be like that. It looks pretty fine. Let's have a look final time. And okay, that looks good. Now close this one. Come here. And now okay, AppJS is also working fine. No issues we have here. And this is the API controller, auth, NFT controller. This is the model we have built. This is the router, user router, all of these things we have. So things are looking pretty fine. So again, you can come and you can check all of these courses, which I have explained here in detail, how you can do it. So in that, I have explained that how you can get your own database keys and password extensively in detail. So you can follow that. But let me show you. Click on this and I will type mongoose. Mongoose. Not validated. Remove this one. Okay, mongoose. MongoDB. Click on this. then we you will come to this and here you will find about this mongodb everything in detail so that looks pretty good to me now make sure to create your account i have already done that so i'm going to log in you can simply do it by github or google i'll click on google because i have my account mm. so here you can see that i'm here back into my mongodb server I click on this create and here you will have multiple options you can serverless and you can call a shared server so some are free some are paid so you have to take it one if you already want to go for a upgrade plan then you have to pay money for that but otherwise but in this project we're going to take the free one so you can see i have to go to the share and it's, it's free for cluster and it's not going to create it and it's not going to, and it will not allow me to create because i already have a free cluster running on my application so you in your case you will have an option to create find out all the informations you can see it gives you to 100 512 mb of storage but you can upgrade if you think you can you need but let's click on this create cluster and you have to do that as well create cluster and you can see it's throwing me an error because i already have a free cluster so that's a fairly easy process all you have to do is to follow the process which they will ask you to do and at the end it will it will ask you to create your username and password so make sure to create the username and password and save it because that's what we're going to use it in a project and again i link the video in which i have explained in the i put in the description so you can, can follow that and you can know how to do that so that looks pretty fine to me i cannot create that one so there is the message i'm getting so what i will do is once you will create your 
in cluster you will have your password and the username and this is the exact interface you will get and once you get that you have to click on this browser here you will find all the data you will create in your api as you can see i have created these two resources user and nft and here i have all of this data which i have created on my endpoints when i was testing this particular api so now this is the user and this is the one we have looks pretty good to me now i'll come back here go back and now we have to build the connection so go back here here we have to come and we have to click on this connect and we have to get the string for our database so this is the one which you have to click i have explained extensively all of these methods all of these tools so you can follow that click on this and this is the one we need simply grab this one grab this one particular entire string okay so this is what you have to do you have to get your password is string all of that close this one and now you are ready with the data okay so make sure to come and have a look on this particular one in that i have explained extensively that's why i'm going a little faster here because this is going to be the same old repetitive thing which i don't want to do it so make sure to do the exact configuration things you have to paste your database string and you have to paste your database password make sure to make the password keyword small a uh, capital and you have to change the username with your username which you have provided in your database close this one and now things are looking fine now we are ready to test our application so if i come here this is the api api and we have the server everything is running absolutely fine so if i come here and here we have to run this particular command because we have to start our api so this is the command we have to run start so this is the one we going to run so open up your terminal close this one open up your terminal and here we are the server file so things looks pretty good to me now let's type npm you can type run start or start both will work fine hit enter come back in package and this is what we are running that's the thing you have to keep in mind at hit enter okay let me bring it back here and select here and hit enter and here it say that our database is successfully connected hope you guys can see that database successfully connected and the app is running on port 3000 that looks absolutely incredible so the database is successfully connected and if you want to test this out you can easily able to test this on a postman as well so i'll minimize this one i'll go back to the postman open the postman so here i have postman I'll simply come here, go to the NFTs, and you can see this is the endpoint we have built. This is the endpoint we have built, exact endpoint. And if I come back here in the app, and if I come back to the NFT router, and we are hitting this particular one, get all NFTs, get all NFTs. So this is the root directory, and that's what we are triggering here. And if you come back here in app.js, and this is the root directory. And that's what we have here but here you have noticed that we have a capital nft and where and there we have the small one both will work fine if you replace that one it will work also fine so i'll i'll simply come here and i'm going to make the changes here so first let make a request so you can see we have four nft in our database currently right now and that's what we are getting here the four nft we have in the database and that's what we are getting here looks fine if I simply come here and come to my VS code and this is what I have here. So I want to show you something. So grab this one, make it, let's just test with this capital one. So what I will do, I will simply select this one and replace this one to show you that we are using the actual, the API we have created. Now it's have capital. If you make the request, you will get the same response. Okay. So it's working absolutely fine. We are getting all of the NFT we have listed in our database and our database is also working fine. Now I'll come back here in the database, close this one. And you can see, go back to the browser collections. It's reloading. And if I come back to the NFT and if I delete this one, you can see this is the exact title we have given. So let's come here, the blockchain coder. This is the exact title we have given and the exact data we are getting from there. So that looks fine no issues we have here and to upload the data body 
JSONs and we can easily able to uh, create NFT by following this. You can pass all of the data here in the body in the form of JSON format and you can create that. So what I will do, I'll just keep it for a time being. I'm not going to create it. So let's come back to the MongoDB and here we have all of the NFTs looking absolutely fine. So let's bring the terminal up and if I if I see you can see it looks pretty fine. Close this one. Let's close this one. Make it big and close this one. So the entire API is working absolutely fine. I hope you guys have followed everything I have covered and I hope everything is working from your end fine. If you guys have encountered anything, make sure to watch this video and try to understand that what logic we have built to make our API work. So that's the only thing I want to cover in this video. In the next video, we're going to start working on our smart contract in the web three. So let's move to that.